USC is a football staff that takes a back seat to no one. You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Fight on, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Colkin, and thank you for making Locked On USC part of the Locked On Network, your first listen every day. Whether you're watching the show on YouTube or wherever you want to download your podcast, never forget the show is free. And always remember how much I appreciate your support. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your new small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com forward slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. Coach Lincoln Riley said the goal was to find the right coordinator and then find the best developers. I say he did. Right now, Coach Lincoln Riley is kind of walking around, chest all puffed out again, walking around like a peacock. And that's despite having a seven-win regular season in his still in his rearview mirror. You can still see it. It's getting further away, but you can you can still see it. And the reason he feels so good is because of this new defensive staff that he's put together. On Thursday last week, Coach Riley introduced his new staff to the local media, and that was just ahead of the weekend. And he said, it began with seven names on a whiteboard. And then Coach Riley made sure he let everyone know that at that list of seven names that he had, he got four of them. He wanted the top, he put seven guys on a whiteboard. Said, These are the top guys in the industry on defense. These are the guys we want. He went out and got four of those guys. It's a pretty good hit to miss ratio. It was his dream team, uh, so to speak. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll step lightly with that term around here. UCLA tried the whole dream team coaching analogy back when Coach Neuheisel brought Norm Chow in as his offensive coordinator, didn't really work out that well. So I'll pump the ga- I'll pump the brakes just a little bit on the dream team. Uh, now, of the seven, like I said, he got four of his guys he wanted. So I'm going to assume that uh, Pete Carroll and Bill Belichick and Nick Saban, they probably felt a little overqualified to be USC's defensive coordinator at this stage of their careers. Uh, the four guys that are coming, though, Danton Lynn, Matt Entz, Doug Belk, and Eric Henderson, uh, those are the reasons why USC staff takes a backseat to no one. And each of them um, actually took the time to answer some questions uh, when they met with the local media before the weekend. Um, and by the time I was done listening to those guys, I was sold. I was like, all right, these are the dudes. Dynamic speakers. And it's easy to see why they've been so successful at their previous stops. Uh, When you hear them talk, you're like, all right, I get it. That's why Lincoln Riley wanted these guys. And if USC fans are looking for signs that the defense is not only going to be better, but perhaps even good, um, when that happens, the guys that Lincoln Riley hired, they're going to be the reasons why. Let me start with Coach, the defensive coordinator, Danton Lynn. Um, this is what Coach Riley said his biggest strength is. The thing that the thing I was most impressed about when we first talked is I think he's a really tremendous teacher. Okay. I'm thinking that if you're looking for someone to develop and teach, That's a good strength to have, right? In many ways, uh, when I was listening to to, to Coach Lynch speak, um, in many ways, there's there's some similarities between he and Coach Alex Grinch. But with Lynn, it sounds a lot less complicated when he's speaking. I'm going to ask this question again. How many head coaches stepped down from their jobs to be a linebacker coach? That's what Coach Matt Entz did because he wants to be a head coach at the FBS level. So he knew 
that he had to kind of, you know, take a step down in order to take a step forward. Not so much taking a step back, a step down so he could take the next step forward. Again, he wants to be a head coach um, at the same level that Lincoln Riley's coaching at right now. And it was because he was turned down recently because he lacked that experience at the football bowl level, at the FBS level, whatever we're calling it today. Football bowl, subdivision. Um, so he's he's going to do what's best for not only for USC right now. They need one of the best linebacker coaches out there, but also what's best for him. Coach Riley said, uh, Coach Ent's biggest strength, there's a hard-nosed toughness about him. He really understands and sees the game in terms of uh, all 11 on the field. Okay. Well, he's a head coach. He should. <laughs> so I think that asset is going to go a long way, not just during practices, but it's really going to, excuse me, it's really going to show up on game days. It's giving Coach Riley that second pair of eyes who's got head coach experience on the sideline. Um, coach Jen said he, he wanted an opportunity uh, to advance his career while also helping USC, which he called one of the blue buds of college football. He wants to see them return to prominence. You got to understand the power of the logo here at USC. When this program is operating at maximum capacity, it's good for college football. Here's what Coach Riley thought about Eric Henderson and his strength. Great energy about him that you can feel already in the program. He has a really, really good football mind as well. <clears throat> Here's my take. Coach Henderson is a superstar. Uh, it's not just the words that were coming out of his mouth when he spoke. It was... It was the delivery. It, it's his life experiences that he was drawing on. When he talks, every word, it's like it, it's punching you in the face. It's grabbing your attention. And then it's like, all right, hit me again and again and again. All you need to know is this. There won't be any, any room for excuses in his room. He's been through a lot in his life. You know, he, lost, he lost his mother when he was really young. He never knew his father. His grandmother raised him. Yeah, like I said, there will be no room for excuses when Coach Henderson is coaching you up. He will find a way to get the best out of you. Doug Belk's strength, according to Coach, uh, <laughs> Coach Riley. <laughs> Always different names, sorry. Uh, he said he's an excellent teacher uh, in terms of the secondary, tremendous with the relationships with his guys. This is what this is all I need to know. Nick Saban trained him and wanted him back on his staff, and then Coach Riley out recruited Kirby Smart for Doug Belk. The fact that he was able to go get a a, a coach of the caliber of Doug Belk, who could have gone right back into the SEC, what he was familiar with. That's a big, huge feather in Lincoln Riley's cap. And a big, huge plus for the defensive coaching staff. Coach Riley put his staff together with development first and foremost. He said defense was going to be priority number one going forward. <clears throat> this is what he also said on Thursday when he was introducing the defensive staff. The development side of it was huge. I think we're a little bit of a point in this program where we're starting to evolve a little bit away from the transfer portal and starting to build through high school recruiting. But the only way that this model works is you go get the best developers of talent. You give the best high school players a reason why they should want to sign with USC. And not just sign here, not just come here initially, but hopefully for the large majority of these guys, Stay here through their careers and get and get on that climb. End quote. I said at the very top of the segment that Coach Riley said we have a staff right now that takes a backseat to no one. Here is the full quote. Quote: I believe no one in football, not just college football. End quote. 
also one other thing before we go on to the next segment and <coughs> excuse me and i tell you some of the things that the each of these defensive coaches said um coach riley was asked about why he chose to stay at usc despite so many nfl jobs opening up this offseason quote and this this was a great great answer i want to get it right here i want it really bad not just for me but for this program, the fans, the university, I'm at the place I want to be. Okay. So are the assistant coaches now. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to have as many top tier candidates as possible to interview. Kind of like that defensive staff that Lincoln Riley put together. That's why you need to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have so many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours of posting. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing a lot of hats and that you might not have a lot of time or resources to hire. Thankfully, with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, quick, and easy. Post your job for free at linkedin.com forward slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com forward slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked on Sports Today has the first ever 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they're covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked on Sports Today on YouTube, subscribe, and get the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. In the first segment, I told you a few things that Coach Riley said. You know, let's, let's go some, over some of the quotes from the actual coaches themselves. Let's start off with defensive coordinator, Coach Danton Lynn. We want to make a little look like a lot. The goal is to keep it simple and get the basic fundamentals down. He was explaining how last spring, last year at UCLA, how he moved slowly installing things. Quote, I'm trying to go into, into this spring with an open mind because I know it's going to be a completely different defense. Now, my everydayers who listen to the show, watch the show five times a week, um, they're going to remember when I raised an issue of having too many chefs in the kitchen. Well, Coach Lynn addressed that concern. We're trying to find the best way, regardless of whose idea it is. A lot of development is just trust between the player and the coach. You can see the trust already starting to get built, end quote. So the, I'm bringing that up because the point is that you've got a lot of big-time coaches on the staff, and they're all going to want some input. They can all have their input. doesn't matter whose idea it was. Let's just figure it out and get it right. And Coach Lynn also emphasized that when the staff is evaluating players, uh, he wanted to make sure that position versatility remains um, at the top. He said that when they look at, for instance, when they're looking at like the, the middle linebacker, the Mike linebacker, if he can only play Mike in high school, uh, he, he probably has too many physical limitations uh, to play at the next level. So they want someone who can play multiple inside spots, and that's someone they're going to look at uh, to be able to, you know, help the team develop and as well as to develop that player to their best abilities. Uh, Coach Lynn also said he didn't know Doug Belk or Matt Ince uh, prior to them joining the staff. He said he heard of uh, Belk when Lynn was coaching for the Houston Texans and that there were three or four players who Belk coached 
uh, with the Houston Cougars that went to the Houston Texans. And Coach Lynn said he was always impressed with the way those guys were prepared. So Houston connection between <laughs> Lynn and Belk is um, when the Houston Texans drafted players from the Houston Cougars, he recognized, all right, these guys know what to do when they get to the NFL. And he also said he was going to hold off on naming any potential uh, team leaders uh, because he said it's going to be really important to identify guys once they get going in practice. Uh, he wants he wants uh, leaders for the entire defense. He's just not going to be focused on one or two guys here and there. And then as far as Coach Lynn's influences, uh, quote, definitely a Baltimore influence, Houston influence, Rex Ryan, Gus Bradley. And then for my time at UCLA, a Ken Norton influence. Over the years, it keeps on evolving and it keeps changing each year. We've talked about a handful of coverages and there's already differences from last year. Big emphasis on communication. We want to over-communicate. We want to play with shocking effort. And every single play, we want to play with that effort. We want to attack. Uh, and, and as far as his goals for the spring, we want to build a strong foundation of the defense. We want to introduce the core concepts from a standpoint and a coverage standpoint. Um, Eric Henderson, this guy, like I said, when he talks, you can't help but listen. You, you're, you just, you're constantly being drawn in. This is what he had to say. Great opportunity for me from a career standpoint. It was a no brainer for me. Coach Henney said his motto of discipline, attitude, work ethic, grit, dog work, D-A-W-G, is about setting the tempo and for the way to attack. And not just football, but life in general. I think that's everything we want to stand for in life. Uh, he described his coaching style this way. One word, aggressive. And then he was asked about coming back to college and having to recruit. I love this. <laughs> It's natural for me from a relationship standpoint. I love meeting new people. I love speaking the I love speaking to people. It's who I am. I wanted quote unquote all the smoke about recruiting. Whether you get whether you get the guy or not, that there's a type of impact you can have in a young person's life. So he looks at it as I don't know if it's a conquest, but he wants to help as many young people as possible in life. Um, that's a great quality to have. There's not enough people in this world with that quality. I want these guys to be respected around the country when you talk about how the U USC defensive line is going to perform. It, look, it's not hard explaining why Coach Henderson has such a positive effect on people. When he talks, uh, there is just emotion behind every word that comes out of his mouth. And again, like I said, you're, you're drawn into a zest for life and his wanting to help people become the best they can be. Look, I, I don't know if you speak French. There, there's a term, there's a phrase, je ne sais quoi. It literally means, I, I don't know what. That's what it means. I don't know what. It's said to describe something that can't be described in, in, in simple words or terms. That's Eric Henderson, though. When he speaks, there's just something about him. And the recruits already recognize this as well. He's already having that impact. Coach Matt Entz, this is what he said. College football has become unique. The landscape has changed dramatically the last five years. You have to understand the power of the logo here at USC. To me, this is one of the three or four blue blood programs. When this program is operating at maximum capacity, it's good for college, it's good for college football. And 
I don't think this is the job people thought I would leave for, end quote. Now, <clears throat> if you're not, if you don't remember, I'll say it again. Matt Entz was the head coach at North Dakota State University. It's a far cry from USC. And he's won a couple of national championships up there. His teams are always competing for a championship. He knows that when USC is competing for a championship, that's good for the game of college football. I, I, I talked about Coach Eric Henderson and how he has that special something, that, that je ne sais quoi, dog work. Coach Entz had the best quote of the day when he was talking to the media. Some of you are old enough to remember Coach Bill Parcells when he said, you are what your record says you are. Coach Entz put a twist on those words. And it rang out loud and clear when he said, you are what you tolerate. There, Lincoln Riley, anonymous coaches, high school players, recruits. There's been more than just a little insinuation that USC has tolerated a lot before Lincoln Riley took over. And when I say they tolerated a lot, meaning USC has gotten away from what USC is known for. Coach Entz explained what a championship culture looks and feels like. At North, at North Dakota State University, the logo on the jersey was the most important thing. You always have to find the right players, the right fit. I know that's one of the things our defensive staff is more diligent about. Is it about winning or is it about yourself? He added that when players say they want to go to the NFL, his response is to win games. Coach Entz and I have one thing in common. And my everyday listeners know this by heart. What's the one word I really don't like using? That's right, expectation. This is what Coach Entz had to say. Quote, I'm not a big expectation person. I don't like the word. I like standard. What is the standard? This is a championship level program. Then we need to hold our players to that standard. You are what you tolerate. And said he's been watching some film uh, from last year specifically. And he said you could tell at times there was a lot of thinking going on on the defensive side of the ball. We're only as good as what they're able to execute. And he said it was clear that at times the team was struggling from the amount of communication and checks within the calls. We all saw that. It didn't take a trained eye to see any of that. And then he talked about the subject of having too many, you know, having too many cooks in the kitchen. This is how Coach Ensa approaches it. Staying humble. I'm here to help drive the vehicle, but I'm not in charge of it. If we're process-driven, nobody is really worried about who's getting the accolades or the publicity, end quote. It's a great attitude. Doug Belk, USC's new secondary coach. He hasn't received the same shine as the other three guys. He's, he's a little bit more quiet, more, more reserved. But that doesn't mean he's not the right guy for the job. Again, if Nick Saban and Kirby Smart want you, you are a five-star coach, period. End of story. I think we have to change the narrative, uh, Coach Belk said. Everybody knows what Coach Riley has been able to do with quarterbacks and scoring on that side of the ball. Our energy is that we have to match that. Okay, I like that. Putting a little little competition on that side of the ball. He also talked about how the key to uh, the, the two keys in the secondary um, will be all about eliminating the big play and tackling. <laughs> he said it's a combination of a lot of different things, but those two are big. And here's the cool thing with, with Coach Bell. It's not a one-size-fits-all mentality when it comes to development and techniques 
This is what he said. With different body types in the secondary, some of the long cornerbacks versus some of the shorter, more explosive players, they'll teach different techniques that work better for specific players and specific body types. Okay, I like that. And they went on to talk about Kamari Ramsey. He, he talked about how he's strictly business, loves football. And John Humphrey, who's played a lot of cornerback at UCLA. The bottom line, what he, when he was bringing up those two guys, when guys understand the scheme, uh, it curves the learning process. And it gives, you, it gives guys confidence when they communicate. Doug Belk, he doesn't have any ties to LA, USC, or the community itself. But he said um, when he was coaching with Kerry Colbert at Alabama, and he had Kenichi Udaisy on the same staff um, with the Houston, um, over there at Houston last year, he's heard plenty about USC. <laughs> USC is constantly being mentioned when those guys are around. So there you go. That is the USC's, that is the new USC defensive coaching staff. They got a chance to talk to the media. Those are some of their words. Spring football. Oh, by the way, April 20th. That's the spring game. I think that means spring camp is opening March 19th, about a month away. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers, you're going to get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets. They've got live same game parlays. They've got some exclusive prop bets you can get in on and a whole lot more than that. Just visit FanDuel.com forward slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NBA. <clears throat> Real quick, major props to the women's basketball team. They're playing like they have the number one player in the country. And they're playing like they're getting ready for the NCAA tournament. They look like they're going to do some damage. They went on the road. They swept both Oregon schools. In fact, at halftime, USC at Oregon, uh, it was Team Juju Watkins, 24, Oregon Ducks, 21. The actual halftime score was USC 50, Oregon 24. Excuse me, 21. Juju had 24 of the 50 points. Meanwhile, back at Galen Center, the men, they won. They got a split this weekend. They struggled to beat Utah by four points. That was back on Thursday. And then on Saturday night, they blew a 16-point second-half lead and lost in double overtime, 92-89 to to Colorado. That same Colorado team, UCLA had the, held them to 60 points Thursday night. Well. Let me throw this stat at you. Can you believe, or would you believe, that USC has not won three games in a row at home all season? They're not going to do it this year. It's impossible. Can't happen. Well, for one, they only have two more home games. <clears throat> this week, they get to practice for UCLA. That's their next game. Saturday night, Westwood. Holy Pavilion, 7 p.m., USC takes on UCLA. Then they're going to head up to Washington, play Washington and Washington State. Then they finish up at home against the two Arizona schools. Forget winning three in a row at home. We know that can't happen. How many more wins will this team get before they get to the Pac-12 Conference Tournament? And at this point, do they even want to partake in the Pac-12 Conference Tournament? There's a good chance they win zero more games before the end of the season. Kobe Johnson talked about it, uh, getting it figured out after the game in their their most recent loss. Here's the thing. There's, there's no more time 
needed to get it figured out. You're at the end of the year. Despite all that talent on paper, this roster, the way it's comprised, it's just not a good team. They don't play defense consistently. They don't put any effort out there for rebounding. And they sure as hell cannot handle tough situations. Hidden in those details, this team now has 10 wins on the season. And it's why they can't, it's why they don't win close games. I mentioned the rebounding or the lack thereof. Against Colorado, in double overtime, they were out rebounded 47 to 22. It's freaking disgusting. Lincoln Riley said it. He's got a poor defensive, he's got a poor rebounding team. His bigs up front do not know how to rebound or don't care to rebound. That's what Kobe Johnson said after the game. We're right there. These close games, we've got to be able to do the little stuff, the little details. I hate to be the one to break it to USC's team captain. However, rebounding and playing defense, those are not little details. I mean, I suppose Coach Enfield could put Johnson back on the bench. Hopefully he can try and, you know, send a message that way. But he tried that already a couple times, and it didn't work. So for those of you who, like me, who stuck through it through the end of the game, let me ask you something. What did you think of that final shot selection, which, by the way, came out of a timeout? With 12 seconds to, to execute the play, I'm not sure what the design call was, However, I doubt it was a desperation Boogie Ellis air ball from 30 feet away, 35 feet. After the game, Coach Enfield said, anytime you need a three, the other team can guard the three-point line. They, Colorado defense, switched out. They switched out on Boogie, and the guy jumped over the screen, and the second option was there. The play before that, we got a wide-open three for Boogie on the out-of-bounds play, and he missed it. So that shot goes in. It's a little different, end quote. I don't think Coach Enfield was pointing fingers, but on that play before when Boogie missed the wide open three, the players did everything right, except make the wide open basket. Here's the thing. The game should have never gotten to overtime. And Coach Enfield also said after the game, tough loss for our team. Guys played hard. So disappointing. Guys play very hard. Just one possession here, one there. That was the difference. After this most recent home loss, I'm sorry. But I can't help but think back to this past football season and think to myself, changes need to be made. And also, how much Coach Enfield is starting to sound a lot like Coach Riley. You know, especially when the team, the, when the wheels were falling off the bus during the middle of the season, towards the end of the season. This team is really close, end quote. No. No. I, I, I will not accept that answer. I know injuries have played a role this season. But even the other guys who have had chances to step up, they haven't. They just haven't. Not a lot of not a lot of team development. Despite individual talent and that talent making its way to the NBA, not a lot of team development. Look, I'm really I'm I'm sure athletic director Jen Cohn is going to have a sit down with Coach Enfield after the season. Um, because look, despite Coach Enfield's NCAA tournament resume. You know, he has been USC's best coach by far. You have to go back to the Bob Boyd era for this type of, you know, winning. Um, I, I, coach Enfield's teams are known for playing defense. This year, his, this team is not known for playing defense. 
So is 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 Jen going to give Coach Enfield another year? Does he deserve another year? Will staff changes be made? We know Lincoln Riley did that during the offseason. Here's the thing. Basketball staffs are a little different than football. You can replace a coordinator or a coach, you know, a position coach in football. It's a lot easier to do it. Um, in basketball, you're usually replacing an assistant coach because they're leaving for another opportunity somewhere else. The question is, who's coming for Coach Enfield's assistance? Who's coming for Coach Capco, for Coach Morris, Coach Mobley? You like to have the continuity. You like that continuity if the team keeps getting better and they're developing. I'm just not sure that's happening right now. I'll be back with another episode of Locked on USC tomorrow, five times a week. That's what we do around here. And I got to say, again, thank you to all of you who are sticking around. Look, we're in the middle of February. There's nothing going on right now, USC football-wise. So, you everydayers, you diehards, thank you. And you know what to do.